everybody. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, where I make the views table relatable. I take the table dynamics and I relate those to our everyday lives. We got a chat, so come on in. Let's get started. Come on. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I appreciate everybody for joining me for another episode, and I hope that all of you are having a really good day. So I wanted to talk about something with you guys, and we are going to listen to a piece of audio uh, as we leave uh, our time together. But, you know, a lot of people have been talking about just how um, they just don't understand why it has been so hard for The View to replace Meghan McCain. And of course, uh, people who are citing this are talking about how terrible her behavior was. They're focusing on um, those types of things. But I wanted to bring a conversation to you guys, bring something to the table that I just don't think a lot of people are thinking about. And that is Meghan McCain did something that, you know, they're still looking for someone to do. She did something that up till now, no other Republican that they have brought on the show has either been willing to do or is able to do, or I don't know, can be paid to do maybe less because, you know, sometimes people say, I don't really believe these things, but Hey, if they're paying me to come on here and say, this is my opinion, I'm willing to do that for a paycheck. So what is it? What am I talking about? What is this thing that Megan did that I feel like a lot of people uh, who are saying, why is it so difficult to replace her that they just don't get? The one thing that Megan did was that she actually came to the show every single day. She presented an opposing view every single day on just about every single hot topic. And I feel that people who are Uh, you know, musing about why it's so hard to replace her, don't understand really what this show is about. And maybe not so much what this show is about, but what this show has become. Our show is no longer the lighthearted, you know, mostly pop culture, mostly women's issue show. This show is now politics heavy. And we're going into the midterms. We're going into a new election soon, presidential election, that is. And so this show has kind of found its footing in daytime and that it does what no other daytime show is doing. And so they're not going to abandon this format of being politics heavy uh, for anything. I can't think of not one reason why they would, because people seem to like it. Uh, People seem to really be drawn to the to hearing these women give their opinion on all the politics and uh, everything happening in politics. So this is what Megan did, guys. And I just don't think uh, folks understand just how valuable that was to this show. Now, we all know and I've talked about it for years that Megan did come on the show and 99.9% of the time she was she would just sit there and she would just do a talking point after talking point after talking point. Um, But, you know, even though it was talking points and very few, in my opinion, of those things she said were her original thoughts, the point of it is, is that she did do the job. And again, I need, I need people to understand how important it is for them to have a conservative who actually does the job of the conservative. It is a job. They want someone to come there and present an opposing view, not once in a blue moon, but every single day, every single day. They want someone who's going to be willing to push back every single day against Sonny and Joy and Whoopi and Sarah and Anna every single day, not once in a blue moon, guys. And so even though You know, listen, I thought Megan was a joke on this show. Now, again, I have to make this uh, uh, this difference. I don't know Megan McCain personally. I'm not saying she was a joke personally um, because I don't know her like that. I'm saying the four years she was on this show was a complete joke Um, because, you know, for instance, Megan said she didn't believe in abortion. Um, But one of her someone who used to be a very, very close friend of hers Uh, Anna Kasparian, I think is how you pronounce Anna's last name of the Young Turks, said she had personal knowledge that, you know, maybe Megan had possibly done some things uh, that would make you believe she did believe in abortion. And I'm just paraphrasing there. 
what Anna said. And so again, we need to understand guys how valuable this is. The format is mostly liberals against one conservative. That is ratings gold and they're not going to change that. And so until they find find somebody <clears throat> who's willing to come there every friggin' day, <laughs> not two days out the week, not three days out the week, but every single day and push back on every topic just about and get down with these women, they're not going to hire that person. They're not going to hire that person. And again, we just need to accept this, guys. <laughs> They're not going to bring a progressive, let that go. They're not going to bring, you know, you know, all the other uh, people that people keep bringing up, you know, incessantly. They're not going to give it to Anna. We've already talked about why they're not going to give it to Anna. And if they get desperate enough and they do give it to Anna, I have a podcast explaining the only reason, the only way that Anna's going to get that seat. Okay, guys. So think about it. Every single person, every single person that they've chemistry tested has not done what Megan McCain did. The closest thing we've had to someone who came um, during their chemistry test and did what Megan um, did was Lauren Wright, right? We, we just did a review of her and they, they didn't take to Lauren at all. And as I said on that podcast, uh, the seven point review of Lauren, I think it may have been because she did remind them so much of Megan because all Lauren did was come there and do po- talking points. But again, I don't think the, the, the view is really concerned <laughs> that the woman they hire is a real conservative or if she's a rhino, I don't think they're concerned about that. They just want someone who can sit there and do exactly what Megan did, not the way Megan did it. Remember, we're not talking about her behavior. We're talking about, did she do the job of the conservative? And she did. And we know, and I, or maybe some of you guys don't know this, but you do know that a lot of these, quote, conservatives that are on mainstream TV, they hold very different views in their real lives. They're only coming and saying those things because that's how they pay their bills. And listen, everyone has a hustle, guys. That's just the way it is. Everyone has a hustle. You look at a lot of these people, they've got the straight white teeth, right? They've had, I don't know why people have to go and straighten their teeth. You know, it's like everybody has the same smile. I think, you know, teeth give us all character. I personally have straight teeth and thank God for that. But I was just born with those. But you know, I know people that I love whose teeth aren't perfectly straight. And you know what? It makes their smile gorgeous. It makes their smile handsome. It makes them who they are. But anyway, I get off on a tangent because I can't stand these pearl. I mean, you look at people and all you see is these white, 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 white teeth. I mean, before you can even see them, you see this, this straight set of teeth, you know? So at any rate, so the bottom line is that a lot of these people, when you look at them, they're trying to be supermodels and super, you know, and, and, and these muscle men, you know, they've had all this surgery, you know, they're, they're getting Botox here and there and they're competing with each other. And so it's really a beauty contest or a, uh, 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 you know, how handsome is he contest? A lot of these people are rhinos themselves. They don't really believe these things and they definitely don't go teach these things to their children. But if you were to watch them on Tucker Carlson and all these other programs, you would actually believe that they think those things and not just those people on Fox, but people that are on CNN, because it's both sides to me, Democrats and Republicans both do the same thing. So the bottom line here is that what Meghan McCain did was very valuable to the show. And I don't have a problem owning up to that and admitting that. Again, the way she did it is something completely different. And so the bottom line is until they can find someone who's willing to come there and do exactly what she did, they're not going to, they're going to continue to struggle. They're going to continue to struggle. You know, it takes a lot, I think, for someone to come on television every day and quote unquote lie, which is what that would be if you really genuinely don't believe those things. And you're just saying, okay, my job is to come here and be quote the bad Republican as Megan called her book. All right. That means my role on this panel is to push back constantly. You know, I think that takes a lot of energy, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. And people who are watching you may not know that that's what you're doing. They may actually believe you believe those things. And so for me, guys, I I understand why they have had, you know, a very difficult time finding somebody. 
Um, it's not easy. You, you want someone that'll do what Megan did, but you don't want them to be so far right that they're just like, I mean, you will run off viewers. You don't want that. But then on the other hand, you don't want somebody who's going to come there and who's going to sound, their opinion is going to sound just like all the other women, which unfortunately, even though we love her, we understand that Anna more often than not aligns with the women. And so does, you know, so do, excuse me, many other women that we all love that we would love to see get this job. And so guys, that's kind of the bottom line here. That's why they've had such a difficult time. And that's what Megan McCain did that no one else up to now has done or is willing or, like I said, is able to do. Now, as we end, I want to play a clip that I've played many times before. I'm not going to play all of it this time. I'm just going to isolate a specific portion because it it just helps re, helps all of us understand. Once again, as I said early in the, earlier in the podcast, what this show is now and what it's not going to change from because they found a formula that works. And so we just need to give it up, <laughs> asking for something to change. Um, you know, I think in life it's best to accept things and people as they are and, and stop wishing them to be what you want them to be in your head or mean, want them to be in our heads or want our show to be or go back to instead of just looking at it for what it is and saying, okay, this is what it is. And I either can accept that and stay, or I can't accept it and walk away. And so I'm constantly seeing people berating the view, adding them on Twitter, adding them on Instagram, asking for them to do something different than, than what the show is now. And people like that, I feel like are just banging their heads up against the wall. And those are people who eventually get frustrated and leave because they can't accept the reality of what this show is. So let's listen as Ramin Satuta reminds all of us, including me, what the show is now, what the winning formula is for this show and how without that formula, it just won't work. And it took many years for them to find a conservative like Megan that would actually argue with the other co-hosts and debate with the other co-hosts and be a Republican on the show. How in God's name did you do this for 10 years? <laughs> I'm serious. Being the lone conservative on this show is I have I always had respect for you when I first And the came show on doesn't work unless you actually have a Republican who comes to the table every day and pushes back against what the other co-hosts have to say. So what do you think about that? Leave your thoughts below. Listen, this is my view on The View, a podcast all about ABC's The View. I'll talk Talk to you on the next one. Here we go, here we go again. Trying hard, but you wanna.